Welcome to this packed publishing video course titled Hands-On Infrastructure Automation with Ansible. My name is Alan Hone. I'm the instructor for this video course. I have about 20 years of experience in software engineering, including as an architect, a lead, and a software manager. I'm currently a Lockheed Martin Fellow, which means I contribute to the technical expertise and innovation within that organization. Over the years, I've gained experience in teaching technical topics, including Java, Java Enterprise, OSGI. I've also taught teams to apply Agile principles and practices, and more recently, I've taught DevOps and Cloud. Outside of work, I enjoy hiking and spending time with family. I also spend some time working on open source projects as I have the opportunity, and I maintain a blog. I invite you to visit. There's a contact form where you can reach me with any questions you have about the course. This course, titled Hands-On Infrastructure Automation with Ansible, is a practical look at Ansible, what it can do, and how to use it. By the end of this course, you will be ready to apply Ansible to your own projects. This video is a course overview. We'll show each of the sections of the course, we'll talk about the target audience, and we'll tell you what you need in order to follow along with the course videos. Ansible is a tool for automation. It's intended to take repetitive and manual software installation and configuration tasks and automate them so they can be performed reliably. Ansible allows us to build roles, which are reusable units of automation that we can assemble into a library so we can more easily automate new servers in new ways. There are eight sections in this video course. In the first section, we'll look at what Ansible can do. We'll do an Ansible demo, where we'll install an open source content management system onto servers within Amazon Web Services. Ansible will perform all of the database and web application installation and configuration, so we have a fully automatic installation. In section two, we'll look at the basics that you need to know to start using Ansible right away. We'll talk about the inventory, we'll talk about writing plays, and we'll talk about the playbook file. In section three, we'll talk about grouping Ansible tasks together into a role so we can create that reusable unit of automation. In section four, we'll talk about Ansible's template library, which is a powerful way to control the configuration of software that Ansible is installing. In section five, we'll talk about how those templates, along with Ansible tasks, can be controlled and configured and parameterized using variables. And the three together, roles, templates, and variables, will be essential for building a unit of automation that we'll be able to reuse over and over again, applying it to new systems, which will really be the benefit that you get from Ansible. In section six, we'll talk about the Ansible vault, which is essential for keeping secrets in an encrypted form so we can check them into version control without allowing anyone access to them. In section seven, we'll talk about building a custom module using Ansible. We'll show how Ansible can really do any kind of automation task that we need it to do because we can add a custom module that adds new functionality to Ansible that was not something that was in it before. And then finally in section eight, we'll talk about integrating Ansible with other tools that will allow us to build dynamic development and integration environments and it will allow us to build virtual machine images so that we can rapidly stand up machines that already have Ansible installation and configuration of software applied. The target audience for this course, I'm expecting folks who are new to Ansible. It's perfectly okay if you've never heard of it before, if you are just heard of it and you're interested and you want to try it out. In order to get the most out of this course, it is best if you have some familiarity with configuring servers, some familiarity with installing software, especially in a Linux environment, and some level of comfort with the Linux command line. You won't see too many Linux commands in this course, and Ansible will be doing most of the installation and configuration of software, but in order to help understand how Ansible works and what it does, a little bit of familiarity would be best. In terms of what you need, it's very minimal. We need some kind of text editor. I use Atom during the course of this video course. You'll need some way to install Ansible. 
which means you'll need to install Python and then Ansible on top of it. And this can be done on a Windows or a Linux machine or on Mac OS, if that's your preference. And then finally, you'll need access to some servers that we'll be installing and configuring software on. These can be physical servers. They can also be servers that are virtual using a hypervisor such as VirtualBox, or you can use servers in Amazon Web Services. Overall, by the end of this course, we'll get you to the point where you're comfortable with Ansible, you understand how it works, you'll be ready to use it in your own project. Thank you very much for watching this course overview, and I hope you enjoy the videos.